Now it's time for the compound mixed team's gold medal match between Germany and Korea. And coming up on stage is a shooter who's been here earlier on today, Christina Heigenhauser. And her teammate will be Marcel Traxel. So Heidenberger, Heigenhauser, sorry, Heigenhauser ranks at 48th in the world, 29 years old. Hasn't had the best tournament for her, you would think, judging from her arrow average in terms of individuals, but she's really poured it on in team competition. Usually she averages about 9.4 in arrow. This match, 8.9. As for her teammate Marcel, he's coming in at a higher than normal average, 9.6 for this tournament. And now the Korean team. On the Korean side, you have Song Yun Si, Song Yun Su, sorry, and Kim Jong Ho. So a good pairing here, a very strong team for this gold medal match on both sides. Song Yun Su, 21 years old, ranked seventh in the world, and right at her error average, 9.5 error average. The best round she's ever shot in our qualification round, which is 72 arrows, 720 points, a 699. As for Kim Jong Ho. Pretty stout, 9.7, ranked 13 in the world, but um, 23 years old, this archer's really starting to come on here in compound. Yeah, he's had some good uh, good tournament results this year. Thought he was gonna make it a little further individually here at this competition, and uh, just didn't, didn't pan out for him. Lost to Sebastian Pinot, who will be in the, the gold medal final in, as an individual, but they shot strong in the, the mixed teams, and here they are competing for gold. Korea's ranking in mixed team competition, number one in the world, number two in this competition. Going to get upgrades to Germany, who finds himself in the gold medal match, ranked ninth today, 20th in the world. <laughs> Song Yun Su, yeah, with a nine to start off with. Yeah, little just conversation off there. with the coach. Yep, coach called a ten. I don't think he got a good look at it. Then the nine went up on the board, and she kind of gave him the the what's that. Hole. Nice shot. So Kim Jong Ho, he's competed in 56 matches in world archery. He's won 40 of them, 71% of his matches. So he's a competitor. Out of Marcel, Traxel. Good shot. Good 10. Just on the left side of the X. Christina Heigenhauser. Nice. Hey, does that help, Steve? When you have a good arrow in the 10, is it something that you, you can see and you use to aim, or is it just something our, that um, we as commentators say? It's hard to see one arrow. Is it? So yeah, if you get a group of them down there, yes, but they're not they're not throwing a group down there, so it, it's not really a, a helpful thing in this case. Pretty Sun. cool shot off the sunglasses there. Yeah. Sun Young Su, there it is. So from a nine to a ten. For Song. Now here's Kim and Jong Ho. Yeah. Very good 10. Nice shot. Do you see anything, Steve, with the form that you've seen from Korean archers in recurve that translates to compound that might be different from how, you know, say, shooters in the US or maybe even European countries yeah. shoot? Yeah, they take a bit wider of a stance. <laughs> I take a kind of a comfortable shoulder width stance, like I'm going to try to stand all day. Mm -hmm. And they, they kind of split a little wider. Maybe they feel like it's more st stability. But I think that's a very individualized thing. And do what you think is best for yourself. Good shot by Christina Eigenhauser yeah. after a nine from her teammate. Christina, 2013 world champion individually in uh, Belek, Belek, Turkey. Super windy tournament there. Unbelievably windy, and she came out on top, and then uh, recently beat cancer. Amazing. Yeah. Her first tournament back, is that right? I, uh, think? I think this is her second. Second, second yeah. back, yeah. Yeah, incredible. Having a great go at it. Yeah, that when she, when she won that World Archery Championship back in Bellic in 2013, October, you know, it can be kind of windy. It was uh, 
30 miles an hour plus. Wow. During the during the rounds, it was uh, they they instituted some special rules for it, uh, just for safety's sake. And I was there working. I was happy to not be there shooting. Oh really? Yes. Working. I was uh, I was working on behalf of, of Hoyt Archery there. I see. Yeah, doing a repair booth. But that was fun. So right now we're all tied up, 39 apiece. As that first end we saw from Germany, X10, 9, 10. From Korea, 9X, 10X. So we'll see if, if that's the sign of things to come for Korea as they start to find a rhythm. It's been crazy, just different wind that we've been feeling in our commentary position and watching those two wind socks bounce around. And while they were pulling arrows, the wind seemed to pick up and then all of a sudden it just calmed down. Yeah. And I think what we get up here is significantly different from what they feel down there. It's, it's really hard to gauge. And in this, in this stadium, I think the best thing you want to do is try to hold middle. Don't try to favor one side or the other because it could be doing two different directions before the arrow gets to the target. Yeah. Kim Jong Ho. Look at the release. When he shot that bow and released it, you could see that there's some type of recurve influence. It's, yeah. It's the forward motion yep. with the wrist and letting that bow just jump out of the hand. Yeah, they kind of have that roll of the bow. A lot of what I would call yeah. full time compound yeah. archers. Uh, they don't they don't roll the bow forward. A lot of times they just let it drop. Mm -hmm. By the time the arrow's fired, you you can't you can't drop your arm fast enough to make a difference as long as you fire it first. Good solid ten from Marcel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. look at that shot. Christina Heigenhauser now really in a rhythm. Yeah, Christina was a former pistol shooter. Uh, she shoots a com she commands the release, meaning she's she's uh, punching the button. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not pulling with back tension and having the surprise shot. It's not her style. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I don't see an issue with it. She's she shot pretty darn well how she does it and has a world championship under her belt. So. As Kim Jong Ho goes to full draw, and he'll set into his anchor point. Yeah, you'll see a good pull on the release here. Yeah. Yeah. Good shot in the ten ring. So Song Yu Su drops another point. This is an opportunity for Germany to take the lead with two tens or two X's, same value. Good shot. Good 10 on the right side there. Yep. A good look at that hand that Steve was talking about. Watch her activate that trigger with her thumb. So you, you'll notice her, her hand doesn't really recoil backwards like a lot of shooters who use what we call back tension style. She's just in the shot, relaxed in the shot, and then just activates. Right. Yep. And for those of you who may not be super familiar with this, when we talk about the release, we're talking about the, the component in their hand that ac they actually use to, to fire the bow. And there's a few different styles. Christina there in that last shot had a, a thumb trigger, so her, her thumb pushes the button, and, and the button opens up the hook and sends the arrow on its way. Uh, some of the other t styles are hinge release, which are operated by rotation. So as the as the handle is rotated a certain amount, the hook clears what we call the moon piece inside and opens up and you fire the arrow. So uh, different ways of doing it. I mean, there's other release aid styles as well. But these are the, mo the two most common, but it all kind of depends on how your brain works, how you're wired, and, and how you're feeling that day for some people. Some people change release yeah, aids day by day. <laughs> that's pretty astonishing to me. Watching people, ah, I just decided to switch the back tension. I'm on a, I'm on a button. I mean, the idea, you know, as as my experience goes with archery, is that you want to have that button activate as a, as a back tension, meaning Correct. like you want to have that same type of rhythm. So yep. if you're doing it properly, just kind of gives you the, you know, just a different feeling. Maybe mix your brain up a little bit. Right. Yeah. A lot of people with a thumb button, they're not actually pushing the button. They're pulling through it, and it's, eventually, it right. eventually, there's enough tension on it to. Yeah. to Look at that shot. To fire it. Great way to forget the last nine shot by Song Yun Su from Korea. Coach was excited. Yeah. Getting some positive energy there. Now Kim looking through the peep sight. That peep sight you're looking into, that's on the string. 
Yeah. You set it, line it up with your scope. There's different, different ways, different ideas. I think people like to use it. For me personally, Steve, I like to have the outside edge of my scope just in a line with the with the peep sight itself. Yeah, and you can change scope or peep size to fit that and there's Ooh. other factors involved there. You can use uh, a piece inside the peep uh, called a clarifier to clear up the image of the target if you're seeing some blur there. there. There's a lot of different things to it. We won't get too far into the weeds, but it's another component yeah. of the equipment of the compound bow. Yeah. Beautiful shot by Christina. Another 10 for her as her teammate opened up with a nine. So now sun, Korea with a one point lead. Sun's starting to creep out again. Get real bright out there. Now, can that mess around with your aperture, the way you look through the peep sight, can that mess with that? It, it can, there's a tough eight there for Korea. Yeah, the uh, changing lighting conditions can affect your point of impact just based on how light is refracting through your scope and through your peep. What do you think? Looks like it caught the line to me. So that eight right now, a huge miscue for the Korean team. Quick shot there. Quick shot. Very quick. Like you could see on the release hand, yeah. it just looked, something looked funky. He, he kind of muttered something probably, you know, oops. <laughs> <laughs> oops in German. Yeah. Yeah. Christina. Hauser, oof, drops that one low. So the, really, the door was open up for Germany, and they just couldn't close it. Yeah, and I'm thinking they're actually going to be trailing by one. I, I do believe Korea will get that last arrow. Yeah, so right now showing 115 on the score, but a nine with an asterisk. Any score with an asterisk next to it, as you see, is a question mark. So the officials will actually go look, put eyes on it, and they will get the official score here in a moment. It'll translate right back to World Archery Headquarters. Just behind this range, we'll have that information momentarily. Another great slow motion shot. And you can see on that, that site, you got a couple of little rubber bumpers there, and that's actually to try to help out with that vibration. So they did give him a 10 in, in lieu of that nine. So Korea will carry a one point lead into the, the final end. Crowd knows what's going on as tension mounts here in the Zocalo, the square in Mexico City, one of the largest in the world. 195 meters by 240 meters, and we have our venue set dead smack in the middle of it. Off in the distance in front of these archers, you see the Metropolitan Cathedral. It took 250 years to complete that cathedral here in Mexico City. So it's 115 to 116 favoring Korea. Germany starts. Marcel with another Ooh. quick shot. Big eight out the left, yeah. Out the left-hand side. It's been said before that when the pressure's on for the German shooter Marcel, that occasionally he can start throwing them out the left side. Can Christina keep them in the match? Oof. Nine. Yeah, they needed, they needed some tens there to put the pressure on Korea. Again, this is the bronze medal match for, so the gold medal match for compound mixed team. So guaranteed a medal for both of these teams heading into it. But you want to always be standing on top of that podium. So 8-9 by Germany is answered by a 10 by Song yun Su. Now Kim jong ho And you can notice that much wider stance than some traditional yeah. archers yeah. take. Good, solid shot. Yeah, he's taking a stance probably as wide or wider than me, and I'm significantly bigger than him. So it's just, it's a little further outside the shoulders, just kind of how they do things. Mm. And like I said, no. <laughs> do what you're accustomed to. And, and that's it. So Marcel again, another quick another shot. Another eight out the eight left. Eight yeah. On the left-hand side. So plenty of time on the clock. So Christina once again with the final arrow for Germany of this one, and she'll shoot a nine. So 149 for the team destined at this point, I think, for 
silver. Right. Yeah, if you're Korea right now, you're just reminding each other to shoot the right target. There is a, you know, yeah. if you shoot the too many arrows into one target, one doesn't count. It's a zero. And a good shot. Well executed by Song Yon Su, knowing what's on the line. And now all Kim Jong Ho has to do is just hit the target. Well, the scoring target rings. Yeah, hit yeah, the paper. Be, yeah, hit the. <laughs> yeah. Nine seconds remain on the clock. Good shot. Way to finish a match off. And that's the way you win gold in mixed team competition. A commanding performance by Korea out of a possible 40 points, 39, 39, 38, and then a perfect 40. Yeah, no, no missed arrows by Kim Jong-ho. Tens across the board for him, a really well shot match. Great job by Korea. One thing I love about uh, when these matches finish, Steve, is the sportsmanship that's always displayed in front of this huge crowd. You know, is that something that's even spoken about, or is that just something that naturally occurs? I think it just kind of naturally occurs. You, you respect your competitors. They've made it there, and that's tough to do. And uh, win or lose, give them some props for it. Excitement from the Korean team as Song Yun Su and Kim Jong Ho will take the gold medal, and Korea will hold on to that number one spot in the world rankings for mixed team compound competition.